Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, KYP561. I'm coming in here to talk to you all about tonight's episode of Love & Hip Hop Miami. We are in season one, and this is episode three. So um, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So, of course, it's going to pick up where we left off last week with Shay dousing old girl smacking the forehead with that ice cream cone, right? So we getting into all of that. She jumps up. Um, what her name is? Gabby. She jumps up and she throws whatever she got, whatever. So, of course, by this time, security and everybody done rushed in, you know, trying to keep them from actually engaging um, with one another. But at the same time, you got Pleasure P just standing there looking like a motherfucking deer caught in the headlights. And I was like, oh, okay. So, you one of them type fuck niggas, okay? So, you're not going to say nothing. You're not going to do nothing it's almost like he looked like he was scared because he ain't want Shay to jump on his motherfucking ass so he doing all of that and I, at that time i was saying to myself Shay, you need to throw something at his motherfucking ass too because now you living up to your name the duck that she gave your ass a couple of damn weeks ago so anyway um once again Baby Blue seems to be like the only one that got some damn sense out of this situation um i really don't know why spectacular is there I don't know where the hell that other one at at all. Uh, what his name is, Slickum. I don't even know where he at. I won't see his ass that one time. I guess he said, bitch, I ain't got time for the bullshit. Okay, I'm not going through none of this shit. Just let me know when it's time to perform. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah, Baby Blue was basically saying, look, man, you know, you're going to have to choose one to at least try and save something. Because other than that, both these hoes going to put your ass on the dough. And which really at this time... I really don't see why both of them wouldn't put him on the dough. You know what I'm saying? So, he just standing there. He ain't got shit to say. It's like he don't even know what to do. See, my thing is, if you're going to play this game, you need to know how to play it at any at any cost. You know what I'm saying? Like, whichever way the situation go, you know how to move. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be having a bitch over here and having a bitch over here. Then when both of your hoes in the same in the same uh place you don't know what the fuck to do you know what i'm saying like see a nigga like you you just need to be a one woman type nigga you know what i'm saying like stop trying to play the field if you don't know how to do it you know what i'm saying and it's clear tonight your ass don't know how to fucking do it okay so you need to leave that shit alone so then we go over here to um to jeff bobby's um boyfriend so he's basically talking about how he's torn between malik and Bobby, you know, he was like, uh, he loves Bobby. He's happy with Bobby, but, uh, he ain't been getting no attention from Bobby. See, listen, when motherfuckers go talking about they, they lacking attention, that means that your ass ain't got shit to do. Okay. That means you ain't got shit to do. A motherfucker that has time to sit around and cater to you every day, all day. That means they ain't got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? So if you need 24 hour attention, you need to go find you somebody that's going to be able to give that to you. And from the looks of what Malik says that he does, he ain't going to be able to give you all this motherfucking attention either. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what you what it is that you want, but you need to, I, I don't know, but you're going about it the wrong way. Now, I can't say that I appreciated the fact that he went ahead and told Malik about Bobby. And he didn't really waste no time with it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I feel like I got to be honest with you. I got somebody. And yes, I love him. You know what I'm saying? But from Malik's point of view, bitch, you can't love him too goddamn much because you got your motherfucking ass over here with me. Which and now I'm like, okay, well, you got a point also. You know what I'm saying? So, um... We'll see how that's going to end up, child. Last time, last we saw them, Malik had then gave him some type of book bag or some shit, child. And next thing I know, old boy got uh, Malik pinned down to the bed, to the sofa, to the floor, wherever the fuck they was at, and whatever. Um, Amara is feeling some type of way about how that shit went down at JoJo's boutique opening. And I don't blame her. And I just want to go ahead and throw this out here because I know I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. But um, Amara, them two hoes ain't shit. That goddamn Veronica and... and Whatever that other one name is, I can't never think of her damn name. Steph LaCour. Them two hoes ain't shit. Them motherfuckers is opportunists. Veronica seems to think that she was doing you a favor by bringing uh, the Hollywood dude there or whatever. But my thing is, you knew off rip that his apology was not going to be genuine. He was only even entertaining the thought of an apology just so he can get a date with your ass. You know what I'm saying? So, how's that genuine at all as far as an apology? But, yeah, them hoes ain't shit. And, um, I'm glad Amara, um, 
I'm glad Amara went off on their ass. Well, at this point, she ain't really she ain't really give Steph too much. It was basically be geared towards Veronica. And then Veronica was like, um, what that be said about uh if anybody I oh if somebody said something about my hair or some old bullshit and I was with Amara, bitch, what the fuck somebody gonna say about you and your motherfucking straight blonde ass hair with your old light skin ass? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's somebody gonna say about you when you fit the mold? You know what I'm saying? So you can, that shit didn't even make no damn sense to me. But we gonna see, um, we gonna see where that shit um go in a little bit. But yeah, them two hoes put their ass on the door, Mark, cause them two bitches ain't for you, okay? So now we go over here to um to G five where um Tip Drill is shooting the video, and she got um Gunplay's girlfriend Kiara up in the video or whatever. You know, um. I just I don't know how to feel about that whole situation. Gunplay shows up because he said Kiara invited him out. You know, I guess to meet her there or whatever. So when he get there and he see, you know, it's a video going on. Kiara up in the video. So now he's confused because he want to know how the fuck Kiara even know uh, Miami Tip. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm borderline disgusted slash disappointed slash what the fuck is going on with this whole scenario i mean i'm just not understanding how kiara was so worried about gunplay coming back to miami and falling into this trap and this lifestyle and whatever and it seemed like she's the one that got down here and then just like you said then drunk the motherfucking uh then drunk the water then drunk the damn day county water you know what i'm saying she's a little too happy to have another woman lusting over her i mean i don't know if you know her being with women is something that's in her past which i seriously it has to be because she's too comfortable with the shit um i don't necessarily know where anybody would think that kiara is a bad bitch or it's fine or whatever that ass looks like it should have his own brain or something like that's that's worse than any k michelle ass any um let me see who else got all overdone ass and, and i put all of them together okay and that's just that's not a, that's not cute to me. That's not attractive to me. I mean, maybe it's attractive to somebody. It gotta be attractive to somebody, cause shit, gunplay a boyfriend. So uh, trick daddy say she bad. I mean, I don't know. I done been out the game for a long time. Maybe I just don't know what the criteria is to be a bad bitch anymore. I don't know, but I'm not. I I ain't impressed by none of that shit. I ain't impressed by none of it. I'm um borderline disgusted, cause like I said she's so happy to have the interest of Miami tip like I just I don't know child whatever uh, <laughs> then we go over here to Cafe Iguanas with Trick Daddy and Trina now um Cafe Iguanas happens to be one of my spots I haven't been there I haven't been to Cafe Iguanas in a while last time I went there it was actually for my birthday um I think it was like year before last. I'm not sure. Um, I do plan on going there again. When I tell you they got a, a brunch that is off the motherfucking chain on Sundays. <laughs> okay. I'm not necessarily there for the club life anymore. Although that bitch do be live. Okay. But I just don't have the, the patience for that. But they do have a cute little um happy hour or whatever. Child, last time I went there for happy hour, I got that bitch by 5 o'clock. I promise y'all I ain't leave out that bitch until damn near 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> now that shit that was crazy to me. I was so motherfucking lit. I cause um from my house to Cafe Iguanas is about a good let's say hour. Cause Cafe Iguanas is actually in um uh what that shit called uh, Pembroke Pines which is um Broward County. Child I had to man throwing back the motherfucking drinks. I had to drive. I'm the only bitch that had to drive back south. Everybody else that I met up with, they they all came from the same area, which is north. 
Bitch, that's the thing I know. I done, I done passed my motherfucking exit. I done passed my house. I, I, and I've been looking around like, bitch, where the fuck am I at? Child, I don't know who was driving that car that night, honey. But when they say Jesus take the wheel, Jesus really took the wheel that night, child. Because I don't know how I made it. <laughs> but yeah, but that's my little spot. But anyway, child, let me get off of that. So they in there talking. And here come Trina assistant. Listen, y'all, Trina assistant got to go. What her name is, Alvin? That motherfucker got to go, okay? Because you, you're doing too much. Motherfuckers are talking about Bobby. No, bitch, give me Bobby any day over Alvin. I'm not here for him. And I noticed it the, the last episode or the first episode when we first saw him and Bobby was talking and for some reason they kept putting the camera over there on Alvin and he was swinging his head. And, you know, I was like... Bitch, what? And did y'all see how Treat Daddy was looking at him? Like, the fuck is he got going on? I don't even know what the fuck he was talking about, but uh, he made it his business to bring up Bobby's name. And while he doing all that talking, he talking about million dollar status and all this shit. And I was like, nigga, don't nothing about you say million dollar status, okay? I mean, you could at least, he don't even look like he dressed the part. Not necessarily to say what you wear determines your worth, but bitch, if you gonna be doing all that, if you're going to be doing all that shimmying and shaking and shit and, uh, and popping all that shit, bitch, you at least need to get this stubble together because it's all peasy. And then your hair cut in the back. I'm like, Lord, what is happening on my TV screen? Child, but I was with Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy was like, bitch, I got my money on Bobby. And bitch, I got my money on Bobby too. Give me Bobby any day. I, I, I don't want to see Alvin. I think that's his name. I don't want to see Alvin no more because, bitch, you're doing too goddamn much. So anyway... Trina um goes talking about that joy shit. Trick daddy don't want to hear nothing about no goddamn joy. And uh he got the fuck up out of there. Okay. <laughs> um then we go back over here to Prince. Y'all listen, I really Prince drains me. Like I don't I think he's corny and I cannot deal with cornballs. I don't like it, you know. I mean it's okay if you're trying to make a name for yourself or whatever, but bitch, when you putting too much on your name. It starts to aggravate the shit out of me, okay? Uh, that Gabby, okay? Gabby says she from Jamaica or whatever. I just think Gabby doing too much with trying to put, you know, put too much on her accent. Maybe she got an accent. Maybe she don't. But that, but, but, but from when I hear her talk, it seems like it's forced. It's forced, okay? I'm not here for her ass either, okay? Um... You know, I, I guess he's... I, I don't even know what the fuck they was trying to do. I, I think I'm going to skip talking about prince unless he do some shit that i just feel like i got to talk about because that that nigga is corny to me I, he's corny you know he doing too much and i just i really don't even care <laughs> okay <laughs> But anyway, let me just go ahead and finish up with him, child. I guess after a night of partying with him and Gabby and whatever the fuck else that he was doing, he decides that he's going to bring his ass back home, which we all know that he lives with Liz. He's going to bring his ass back up in there, you know, uh, at sunrise, you know. Now, if you want to hang out all night and do your thing, that's fine. Do what you do. But when you live with somebody, especially if that's somebody that you live with, is supposed to be your girlfriend, but you need to have some type of motherfucking respect, bitch. It, I mean, you know, I, I I don't know what you thought was going to happen. I mean, I don't know how you think that that's okay. That's how you know when you're dealing with a little ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, Liz came in there and was like, bitch, you ain't finna be rolling up in my shit whenever the fuck you feel like it. So you could just get your shit and get the fuck on up out of here and go back where the fuck you was at. So he go on hollering about, oh, you ain't got to tell me twice and all this type of shit. So bitch, put your little rumpus steel skin boots on and get the fuck on up out of here. So he leaves. But then he realized that his keys are still in the house. So she was like, but you ain't coming back in here. So she opened up her bedroom window and started tossing this shit out the window. He taking his shirt off. I don't know what you do, what you was doing that for, but whatever. Here go your little shit. Get the fuck out. So the rest of his stuff that she didn't throw out the window, she put it in the tub and supposedly poured bleach on it. Which, I mean... If you done with a motherfucker, just be done with their ass. Don't be doing shit that's going to have to cause y'all to have some type of conversation. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to have to be talked about you fucking up the rest of his shit. You know what I'm saying? If you done with him, get rid of his shit. Anything that reeks of him. Anything that he may tell my oh, I forgot such and such. Put all that shit out there and be done with it. So, bitch, me and you ain't got shit else to talk about. So, if we done, we just done. Fuck you. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he put his little shit in a little bag. 
you know, like niggas do, and and, and rolled on out, yeah. All right, so now we got um, Trick and Gunplay. They meeting up. They I thought that they were supposed to be meeting up to uh, put some work in at the studio, but it basically just turned into a little man gossip slash therapy session <laughs> where they kind of exchanging notes about what, what they got going on with the women in their lives. And Trick Daddy was basically saying that he eventually will have the conversation with Joy that she wants to have, but he gonna have the shit on his time and not a minute before. So basically he just he just on his petty shit. Okay, um he did admit that when he saw Joy that she was looking good, you know. Um but he just gonna do shit on his own time. So I'm assuming that that's why these motherfuckers ain't got no damn divorce yet because it's not on his time. You know, so more than likely what's gonna happen is when he finds a woman that he wants to move on with and that he wants to settle down with, then he gonna be rushing the shit out of her to get a goddamn divorce. Okay, and that's probably part of the reason why she can't be in a relationship any longer than six months because it's still the simple fact Bitch, you got a husband over here. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what nigga worth anything is willing to accept, you know, being involved with a married woman. Regardless on how long she's been separated or whatever, the, the question will still remain, why the fuck y'all ain't divorced? What the fuck's going on around here? You know what I'm saying? So, maybe that explains why she can't keep a nigga no longer than six months. I don't fucking know, but I just know that Trick Daddy's on his petty shit. And, of course, you got Gunplay telling Trick what happened at um, G5 or whatever with Kiera and Tip. And just like um, Trick said, bitch, you got to watch that bitch because she'll take your woman. Okay? That's basically what he was saying. But um, they decided, fuck this music. Let's go get some, let's go get some drinks. So, that, that was that. Um, we have Shay, Liz, and DJ Pooch. They meeting up. So, I guess they finna be, you know, BFFs. At least Shay and Liz. Because DJ Pooch, she only going to go so far with their asses because she has a reputation that she has to uphold. Liz a goddamn bartender. Shay ain't doing a motherfucking thing. So they ain't really ain't got shit to lose. So they can just go and do whatever fuck it is they got to do. DJ Pooch gonna lead their asses to the water, but she ain't gonna she ain't gonna stick around with their asses when the shit get ready to hit the fan. So um they uh, uh exchanging notes about they no good ass men and um they decide that they gonna go and crash prince's um event that he's having and of course dj pooch is down with the shit because she don't like that nigga no way and anything that she can do to sabotage his ass on the low she down with it so um that's supposed to be that so um then we go back over here to bobby and jeffrey so bobby shows up to jeffrey's place or whatever um supposedly he'd have been shopping got all these light ass bags in his hand and um you know uh jeff is telling him you know how he wants something from him you know just a little flirting or whatever so bobby says that he wants to get comfortable and he wants to go put his stuff up in the closet or whatever conveniently when he gets in the closet he sees the book bag that malik gave to jeffrey and apparently these book bags are a big deal that I don't know nothing about the, the fuck it I'm not even gonna get into that so anyway he starts flipping the fuck out because basically he knows exactly who Malik is he knows that that is Jeffrey's first love and for you to now be sitting here telling me that you are accepting gifts from this motherfucker means that you have been in contact with him and then he tells him that he bought it up to his job line. Okay, but either way, okay, so bitch, now he coming up to your motherfucking job. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, he was flipping the fuck out. And he was like, bitch, let me get the fuck out of here before I've been up punched you in your shit. That's, that was the bottom line of that. So, he ended up, um, he ended up leaving or whatever. So, now we roll over here these hoes um Steph LaCour is having a performance at the Haitian Compa Festival um and uh child what is this okay we roll over here to the Haitian Compa Festival where Steph LaCour is performing and who else is there none other than Young Hollywood okay so um she lets us uh know that they're going to be working together and um they get backstage and uh we see we see them there or whatever child i think i got something in my nose lord have mercy jesus not on the video lord oh and just just for y'all to know um 
but anyway, let me shout out and threw my damn cell phone. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, what his name is? Young Hollywood is there. So they backstage, they talking in the trailer or whatever. Um, Jojo and Veronica, they show up. Okay. So when they show up, Veronica is looking like, what the fuck's going on around here? Young Hollywood was like, oh, you didn't tell them that we going to be working together? So Veronica was like, bitch, what? Now JoJo looking around like, what what kind of fuck shit uh, we, we, get, we got going on here with y'all asses with this nigga right here? So then they get into the whole conversation about Amara and Veronica's feeling some type of way because Steph, the whole fucking time you sitting here watching me and this girl go at it. All the while, you know that you finna be working with this motherfucker that now we, we're having an issue with each other because of, but you ain't saying shit. So, uh, Steph hollering about, oh, you know, this is business and he's a good producer or whatever. But just like, um, what her name is, Amara had said earlier in the show, y'all motherfuckers ain't know nothing about this nigga until I brought him up like you know what i'm saying so i'm like y'all hoes ain't shit and basically jojo was like bitch i'm i'm finna get the fuck up from around here because this is some shady ass shit and i don't like how y'all bashing amara behind her motherfucking back and if i'm not mistaken jojo and amara i don't even think they really know each other like that i think they know each other but i don't think they know each other like that when i'm thinking back on the conversation that jojo was having with Veronica no yeah Jojo was having with Veronica early in the show so I mean I, I commend Jojo for that um like bitch I'm finna get the fuck up from around here cause this whole shit is just messy as fuck and I ain't got time for it but um yeah I just I just thought that that was fucked up and um yo Hollywood a young Hollywood or whatever fuck his name is you know he's steady talking about um amara's doing too much and it's not that serious and steph lacour talking about oh she need to let it go but when you the same bitch that was saying you have the same fucking problems that amara has within the haitian community because you're light skinned so what the fuck you mean she needs to let it go y'all hoes need to get y'all shit together okay so i guess i gotta talk about this print shit one more time all right so now we go to his event um it looks like it's at a um uh um what you call that shit it's not the airport but it's a uh, a jet something y'all seen it y'all know what the fuck i'm talking about so anyway he's getting everything set up for his show he says that he has a custom denim line that's coming out now from what i saw it just looked like some motherfucking fashion over jeans where a bitch just put one rip in the back. Now, I don't know how much custom that is, but whatever, child. So, then he go on here talking about how he got Gabby modeling, of course. And, child, then we got to look at motherfucking Chinese Nikki again and kind of find out Chinese Nikki got a motherfucking daughter named Chinese Kitty, bitch. And, so according to Prince, they the baddest mother-daughter duo in Miami now bitch come on now everybody ain't the goddamn baddest everybody's not the motherfucking baddest and and when it comes to the baddest I damn sure will not be putting motherfucking Chinese Nikki okay no way in the number all right I ain't even really want to look at motherfucking Chinese Kitty her name was enough for me but I, I, I done laid eyes on her mama so I really did not want to see what the fuck she looked like and apparently her claim to fame is that she got a million followers on Instagram I mean bitch is that all that it takes is that all that it takes Lord oh, child. so anyway um the, the 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 fashion shows uh getting ready to start and you got um pooch uh shay and liz showing up um shay and liz they basically ready to go fuck some shit up okay and um dj pooch this is where she gonna draw the line because now y'all host finna cause the scene and i can't be seen with y'all asses okay so she conveniently excuses herself just in case y'all motherfuckers started acting a fool i don't want to be associated with this shit okay so when the show starts gabby comes out and um immediately of course shay recognizes her as being miss chocolate dude that's the bitch that i doused with the motherfucking ice cream or whatever so they basically said um bitch we finna go get some answers we finna find out what the fuck going on right here so they go back backstage upstairs wherever the fuck i don't know um they get into this conversation slash confrontation slash altercation <laughs> okay so um they get to going back and forth gabby throws some shit at shay shay slang some shit at gabby or whatever and then the daughter 
comes out kitty she comes out i guess to see what was going on with her friend or whatever and shay was like bitch you gonna need more than this motherfucker here because bitch I'm, I'm about to beat your ass okay um and in the midst of all that motherfucking chinese nikki comes and yanks the shit out of shay from the back i said wait a wait a minute what's going on what the fuck is going on around here then in the midst of that um liz discovers that this gabby is the same gabby that's supposed to be the family friend that had uh prince out all damn night so it was just a big ass what uh, a big ass blow up or whatever between everybody and that was pretty much it now what i do wish would have happened because old old ass um concrete face ass chinese nikki you ain't had no goddamn business coming to sneak that damn girl from the back now i don't like that shit bitch if you coming for me let me see your ass coming okay i can't stand for a bitch to 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 sneak a bitch from behind i can't stand that i wish shay would have had an opportunity to turn around and beat your ass okay <laughs> okay so um we'll see what happens with that um child please we'll see what happens with that um next week y'all so that's all i got thank you so much for clicking on the video um like comment subscribe tell a friend all that good shit because i did forget to uh put that little disclaimer in the uh beginning of the video but um until next time y'all peace out